still trying to chase a dragon they'll never catch of a niche of which you'll never scratch with a scratchy blow a whole bag on a baggie bottle up a problem and a bottle of happy in a high vis tux at the broke folks ball thoughtful provocative and a hip-hop talent that is undeniably from aotearoa tom scott is funny too johnny walkers could have been stan walkers olympic level talkers you name check a couple of people in that that song yeah johnny walker and stan walker <laughs> yeah yeah has he said anything to you no i haven't met stan did you name check Paula Bennett in that song? On the Benny like Paula Bennett, yeah. Get it on the Benny like Paula Bennett, Lord and peasant, landlord and tenant. Banged into her recently? She I have not, I have no. not. Isn't she in TV now? She might be your competition. You're funny. <laughs> I'm going on your show after this. <laughs> you are not, are you? No, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> ding, 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 you just on the jack jackpot. Chip a cap off your tooth, biting the cap off. What you really know about conditioning, Pavlov? you looking at you got an eye problem and what friday night at the liquor i won't go on you have to hit the album but on the highly anticipated second album by avondale bowling club tom and his producer christoph altruento fuse electronica with his trademark jazz motifs jazz music i, I find it slightly melancholic how would you describe it? That's probably my experience of life. <laughs> it's slightly melancholic. But I just don't really gravitate to like major chords. Like minors are sort of what drive me. And also like, it's really hard to write a happy song. Like, so I think when I, when I go to look for something, I'm, I'm trying to hear like struggle. I'm trying to hear pain. Um, just cause I think that pushes my pen more. Whereas like having a nice cinnamon roll is cool and that, but like, yeah, just I, f I find more inspiration in, in struggle and in, in, uh, in the hard times, I think. So I think that's what jazz speaks to because it's obviously a, a music of struggle and of people that were, uh, you know, rebelling against um, the oppressors and that. And um, not that that's what I'm uh, trying to take it and use it for, but that that's the pain that's rooted in jazz mm. music. So I think it's always going to sound like pain and it probably should. It shouldn't just sound like, tick, 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 tick. you know, people think that's what jazz is probably, you know. And that's his dad, Peter Scott, on double bass. Can you just tell me how he's influenced your music style and I suppose your storytelling? Uh, probably in every way. I mean, like, um, yeah, he's a musician, obviously. Uh, I was in my mum's arms while he was at like Glastonbury with Dr. John and stuff. So it was like in me the whole time. And then as a kid, I'd be like going through his records, putting them on. I thought they were the new records, like the coasters working in a coal mine or something, or, you know, Yakety Yak or something. I'd be like, that's my favorite song. Um, so like he influenced me from, from the jump, but I'm watching his career, like in how he just, made a living out of music like barely it kind of made me think oh that's the family business that's what i'll do and i was i was proud to to do it like him you know i, th I thought that the way he lived his life was admirable tom's mum jane is a highly respected production manager your mum worked at tvnz in the maori department or unit did that inform you in any way yeah for sure yeah, like Uncle Fai and, uh, you know, Derek Mickey and, and Derek, yeah, R.I.P. Hone, they were, you know, I, I called them all uncle and auntie. Auntie Mihi, Auntie Stacy. So, like, I watched these, uh, you know, wahini tua and, and just proud, strong Māori, achieving things in a building full of people that thought they weren't, you know? It gave me a perspective that, that I wouldn't have had if she didn't work there. But yeah, also watching how you guys tell stories with your programs. I do believe that an orator has, if, if not more, um, equal influence over change, you know, than, than a politician's mm. pen on a, on a bill. So yeah, I learned, I learned a lot from, from that experience. The UK-born musician has never pretended to be anything but Pākehā. 
But there's something about te ao Māori that resonates with Tom. So your dad comes from Brixton and he said something that struck him was that Māori asked where are you from, not what you do. Yeah. And that kind of landed with you. Yeah. I think you can tell a lot more about a person if you ask them that question, right? Mm. I always feel like it's almost offensive to ask someone, what do you do? Yeah. What do you mean, what do I do? Look, I'm, I breathe and I walk around, and, you know? What do you, you know? Yeah, what, what are you, you trying do? to do? Kind of identify the job so you can identify yeah. the status thing. Yeah, you might as well ask, what are you doing? Or how much like do you this? get? You know, yeah, yeah, or what are you looking at? Mm. <laughs> like, I'll be as much offended by that. Like, yeah, what do you do is such a weird question. Like, but yeah, where are you from? It tell, tells you a lot. It's relational. Yeah, and that's, you know, the beautiful thing about, like, a pipiha, it's like, this is my mountain, this is, like, that tells me a lot more mm. about someone. In 2019, he accepted the coveted Tate Music Award for Best Album with a challenging acceptance speech. So I just want to acknowledge that we're still on stolen land. I just want to acknowledge that we're still lucky to be babysitting it. It's my duty as a Pākehā to just bring that up every now and then at least. Like it would be better if I could give it back. But, <laughs> um, but you know, that's appreciated because people often don't use platforms powerful platforms to, to make a point like it's, that. And it's crazy. Like we, we sat there and went, wow. Well, it's crazy it's that a... it's like such a big thing to say, like the truth, like. <laughs> this new concept album is themed around trees. Yes, Tom's a nature lover. It's been four years in the making. What's the message? How ancient and archaic some of our thinking is that, that was, you know, bills that were written in times when we thought ridiculous ideas about things. And also just, I just wanted to soak up everything that I was walking through in the neighborhood. Like, so as much as it might be my personal experience, I wanted to speak about how much tomatoes are. <laughs> You know, just like how hard it is just to pay the rent these days. And for the average person, it's, it's getting harder. Mm. And, and the middle class getting eaten. Capitalism's already eaten its, the bottom of its tail. You know, and I think it's eventually going to eat itself. Mm. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to, to put a light on that and, yeah, explain the average person's, like, struggle to pay the rent in, in, in Auckland. It's too high. It's too high. You talk on your album too about marijuana, so can you tell me what your message is with regards to that? I mean, obviously it's quite pro. Um, I, th I think, uh, you know, the album was, was going to be released but when the referendum came out and then the referendum went the way it did. And yeah, I just thought that was kind of crazy that, you know, we had the Choice of Life Act Mm, that's right. That was overwhelming. People are like, yeah, man. How you choose to end your life, that that's should your be your choice. own choice. That's yes. your own choice. But how you spend it, mm. no, 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 no. Don't you dare touch those herbs out there. Like, and it was like 49%. And I just know that there was at least 1% of stoners that just forgot the referendum was on that day. So they should have, you know, you could have just pushed it over a bit, <laughs> you know, just to... But um, yeah, I just think that's, that's kind of absurd and that kind of says to me that we're more scared of marijuana than death. Like, the average New Zealander is more scared of dreadlocks than dread itself, you know? But I'll be out in one wonder if I was brown, would I get the same amount of time for the same amount? Have you ended up in the court system yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was that? I think everyone should end up in the court system. They might understand how rigged it is. You need to see it. Like, justice is just a juxtaposition between the police and the judge's decision. Like, that's an old homebrew song, but, like, that's all it is. You got the, like, the police sit in there, and they got their little thing there, and then the judge is there, and the guy that's, like, trying to plead his innocence doesn't even get to talk. They just look, they just look like that. Like, and if he's not allowed to talk, why is he even there? I wouldn't set that up if I was trying to have justice in my household. 
Avondale, Auckland. It conjures up images of the race course, giant spiders, and for many of us, Tom Scott, Avondale's biggest cheerleader and perhaps its proudest father. One of his sons appears on the opening track of the new album. Photosynthesis. Yeah, what's that? Photosynthesis. Yeah. Yeah. How oh, has having children changed your thinking? In every way, I'd say. It's, um, it gives you a priority. It, 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 um, Even if makes, you don't get much sleep? Yeah, sleep's not the priority anymore. Sleep's a currency that you trade with your partner. But no, it changes everything. It, it wakes you up. I always say, like, you don't get ready for kids. They get you ready, you know? You hear people like, oh, we just got to get our finances together. And like, no, nah, no. Nah. Have the kid, and then you'll get your ass together. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's been, it's been cool just to step away from like being as egocentric as I can be and, and just to be like, I'd do this for, for you. But I also know that that's not entirely true and that I do do music because I love it. But um, I definitely, um, I'm more precise in my aim to, to make sure that the thing's financially um, successful. The album. I, I got kids to feed, yeah, you know, yeah. like whereas That's back in the day I might no just, way. yeah, it's hard to, to make art that can sell as well. I, don't, I think that's probably not even a thing that should have ever happened. Like it's pretty crazy we used to just, you know, sing songs to welcome people back from the docks or, you know, to bid them off into the next life or and then someone's like, that's great, can you do that? I'm gonna just record that, we'll put it in this bottle here, we'll sell it, like, it's a pretty crazy concept, really. I don't think music's even meant to be sold. When COVID struck, some artists got creative, not Tom. We were all on edge, you know? I went to the um, doctor one time and I was like, hey, my heart's beating weirdly. And he's like, oh, anxiety. I'm like, no, can't be, I'm fine, like, but, I was, I was anxious and I think we all were and we were just talking before about how divided we all got. Mm. Like I was so pro this vaccine that I had kind of no idea about, but I was just like, this is the good side. I have to fight the good fight. But I was probably just scared and like we went straight into tribalism, you know, like this side or this side. And I, I just think it was, it was blooming gross. Like how, how uh, animalistic we all got and how divided we all got. So, um, yeah, I, w I look back at it and, and think, man, I was really on edge that whole time. I'm glad that we're pretending it's over now. <laughs> Tom broke into the music scene with Homebrew, a popular and at times controversial band, one that took a goat to the New Zealand Music Awards. Was it challenging to not duplicate African-American style hip-hop? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a fine line to walk, uh, to not be just playing like a karaoke version of, of my idols. But I think that's forced me to have to be more local and to draw more from what I know than maybe some people do mm. because, you know, my card should be called quicker for, for you know, not doing this authentically. But yeah, all, all the music that we consume, especially today, is essentially from the tree of African-American music, you know? Yeah, so from it's... From funk to gospel to the yeah. blues to, you know, to Africa. And so I think we're all drinking that water in a way, but it's definitely uh, very tapu for me to, to make sure that I don't bastardize with his documentary hat on, Thomas interviewed the likes of Kendrick Lamar and George Clinton. Trees was released on Friday, but the talented wordsmith is on a personal mission to pimp his reel. Are you doing night classes? Yeah, I just signed up. Yeah. How are you finding it? I, I haven't gone yet, but I just signed up. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gone. But we, um, you know, um, my partner's Māori. Oh, I sound like f***ing, uh, what's her name? Talofa lady. <laughs> But, um, you know, we speak to our kids, like, and make sure that they got their little tongue in that. Good so boy. I'm just trying to step my up. Oh, awesome. Thank oh. you so much for having me. Thank you. What a pleasure. Thank it's you. awesome. Congratulations. Congrats to you. You got the best show on TV. Like, this is the only place musicians want to go. You're coming for my chair. I'm watching <laughs> you.